Absolutely hate it. Uh, right, now I think it's time to, because of course, because the nature of the fact that the driving test is evolving, there is one sort of area in particular that will be most impacted on this, and that is of course driving instructors. So I'm very pleased to welcome to the show now as well to join us is Ian McIntosh, who's the CEO of Red Driving School. Ian, hello. Uh, hello, hi, Ian. What I'm what I'm hearing from from Leslie is very encouraging in terms of how things are changing with the driving test. But presumably for you, that means you constantly have to revise what you're teaching people. Well, yes, that's true. But um, these these changes were proposed, I believe, first in 2014, and many of our instructors took part in the trials during 2015 and 16. And as a company, as a business, we reorganized our training schedule, our progress log for our customers uh, some time ago. So we've been teaching the new curriculum, if you like, for some time. But but even that said, uh, Andy, what, what we teach is safe driving for life. And if we do that well, the candidates will pass the test anyway. Uh, so um, we're, we're very happy with the evolution that we're seeing in the driving test. Do you know, that's that's really good to hear, actually, Ian, because, you know, that is precisely the attitude you want. Teach a, teach a great driver. It's kind, of, it's kind of like, you know, any exam, really. You know, the idea is if you know the subject, it doesn't matter what the question is, mm. because you know the subject. So just be confident right. with it. That's right. I mean, we were constantly saying, don't, don't just practice the test routes. You need to teach people to be able to drive in any and all situations. And even the things that are no longer in the test, uh, we will still continue to to teach people how to do those manoeuvres because they'll need to know them anyway. Um, mm. But it is a, a, about being a safe driver, and if you, and as I say, if you can do that, you'll pass the test. Ian, is is the hardest thing to teach confidence? That is a good question because uh, people, you know, we we teach everybody from every walk of life with different competences, competences and skills. Some don't get nervous, some get extremely nervous. So, you know, part of a in- driving instructor's job is also a little bit of being a psychologist and managing the customer's, uh, uh, you know, nerves in that sense too. So, teaching confidence comes with time. Everybody gets there in the end, but some take longer than others. Do you know, it's, fu- it's funny, just kind of, you know, thinking about the job of a driving instructor, you have to, it's not just teaching them the skills, it's, it's like you say, it's being able to handle people, and mm. I mean, I've met a lot of millennials, there's a lot of lovely millennials out there, but there's also some, some very cocksure millennials as well, Ian, so I suppose some of them, you, it's, it's, the, it's the flip side, isn't it? It's not just confidence, it's maybe uh, reining them in a Taming. bit. Taming. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, yes, you can indeed get people that are, that are overconfident and, and uh, need to just be, uh, you know, backed up a little bit to make sure they're doing things correctly. But um, most young people are... Uh, remember that customers are, aren't being made to learn to drive. They want to learn to drive. And they've engaged a professional because they want to learn to drive properly. Uh, so it doesn't tend to be a problem of overconfidence. It's, I would say it's more a case of, of gener- uh, teaching people at the rate and the pace that they're capable of learning of to achieve that goal of being as safe as they can be at the point of being a qualified driver, which means they're still vastly inexperienced, but we've taken them to a point where at least they're, they're safe. Leslie, this must be music to your ears, hear, hearing Ian say this, is it? It is, but not really surprising in the sense that we didn't uh, do... Uh, make these changes without quite considerable consultation with road safety professionals, driving instructors, um, even academics and people who uh, specialise in teaching people with special requirements. So we took these people with us, we designed it as as a group of professional people, we did a rigorous trial um, involving um, something in the region of 4,000 candidates, we did a public consultation. Uh, And and so it it is very pleasing to hear, but we have worked with industry to take this forward, and it really is a good place to be that road safety professionals um, like Ian and others have been supportive, and we can really work together for the benefit of road safety for young people. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sort of really encouraged by it. Um, A question for you both, and I'll come to Ian first, I think. We can't hide from the fact that the roads are getting busier. I mean, much, much busier. And, and, you know, the word traffic is something that makes everybody Mm. shiver, and it seems to be round every corner these days. But but that must also, I mean, we're talking about how the the test is changing, etc., but but that inevitably, the sheer number of people on the roads is going to affect how and what you teach and, and how people need to behave, isn't it? 
Um, yes, uh, uh, but that's uh, that's nothing that's changed for today's learner. They, they've learned in an environment that is very, very busy. If you go back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, of course it was a different environment. But they're learning in that busy environment and coping with that traffic is part of the educational journey that they go on. It's in part, incidentally, why occasionally we have the conflict with parents who say, well, I only had five hours. How can my child need so many hours to learn to drive? Well, the roads are a very different place to when they learn to drive. Mm. Uh, so that's a, that's a constant battle. But our customers are learning in today's environment. That's what we have to teach. Is there an average number of lessons that, that a, 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 an average driver needs? Well, the, the oft-quoted number uh, is 47 hours with a professional instructor. 47, Hopefully, is it? 47, yeah. It's, uh, it's a, a long journey. And that's typically backed up with practice in a parent's car or something like that. But yeah. mm. yes, it's, uh, it's not the five hours that it was in my day. Um, do you know, I'm actually really pleased to hear, whilst I'm, as a dad of two, I'm kind of thinking, 47 hours? <laughs> but, uh, you know, as a, as a driver on the road that's aware of other cars all the time, I'm really pleased to hear that, because although you can never have enough time in the car, that sounds that sounds kind of pleasing. Yeah. You know, it's better than 15 minutes, isn't it? Hope yeah. for the, 15 minutes in a field, you know? <laughs> Hope for the best. There's a lot to learn. There's yeah, learn. yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, this is one that surprised me, speaking to Quentin Wilson a few weeks ago. Uh, he sort of said to me that, that his son, who's, who's of driving test age, has opted not to learn to drive. Quentin Wilson's son, bearing in mind, you know, the guy who used to host Top Gear, opted not to learn to drive because of... The fact that he believes that autonomy is 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 coming so quickly, he won't need really? to. Yeah, wow. Well, I'm a bit startled by that. I don't know what. Well, um, go yeah, on, go I, on, Ian. I don't think it's just around the corner, is it? But I think we'll be uh, some decades yet of still driving normal cars, automatic or manual. Obviously, there's a move towards electrics, which are, there's going to be. An, there is already an increase in the uptake of automatic tests and automatic licenses, but. I think uh, having to drive the car is going to be a skill that young people need for many years yet. I couldn't agree more. But, but Leslie, just thinking about autonomy, because I, I'm with Ian, I think, I think youngsters should absolutely and, and will absolutely have to learn to drive. But we are aware that lots of manufacturers are now testing autonomous cars on the roads. Will that change our behaviour and how we will have to be? In a, and will it change the test, do you think? Oh, I think over time this will have enormous change for everyone. I mean, at the moment there's certain levels of autonomy which are fundamental safety features that are becoming quite um, normal features of most cars now. So lane departure, uh, emergency braking, um, warning signs in blind spots, all of which we embrace as, as safety features on a car that still require driver input. It doesn't do it for them. Um, and for us, I think the challenge will be the transition from where we are now to full, full autonomy. By the time we're being driven back around um, by, by computer, life will be quite easy, but it's the transition between where we are now and then. And, and I think, as Ian says, I think there's a lot that will happen, but um, the, the whole market of changing cars into a whole autonomy will take many years. Yeah, uh, without any shadow of a doubt. Um, mm. Well, listen, Ian, Ian, and, and Leslie, thank you very much for your your company and your your excellence today. Really, really appreciate it, and it's 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 really encouraging to know that actually, I mean, sure, crashes are going to happen, accidents are going to happen, but at least new drivers are having quality time in the car and a test that is relevant to modern driving conditions. So, thank you very much for your company today. Indeed, You're thank you welcome. very much. Really appreciate it. Um, right then, Emma, you have been doing fancy things with fancy cars. <laughs> Should we have a quick break and then you can tell us all about it? Sure. All right. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Access all radios. Talk radio. Give it some lip.